Hi all, this is Uni, one of the TAs for Spring 2023 Intro to Deep Learning course. Today I'll be talking about Google Colab, which you'll get to use a lot for your homework over the semester. Google Colab is a Jupyter Notebook style Python execution environment, which can be accessed from your browser without any setup. It is provided by Google Research as a free tool. It has a perk that it comes with free GPU, which you'll greatly rely on when you are training your model and running ablations for your homework assignments. In order to use Google Colab, you first need to create a notebook from this link where you can create a blank notebook where you could rename it and play around with. So you can um, use this new notebook feature here in order to create a blank notebook. Let's just wait to load. And then you can click on here in order to like rename it. Um, note that this will be saved to the Google Drive of the associated account that was used to create the notebook. You also have an option to open the notebook that is already created for you. If you have any notebook that you're already working on, um, you'd be able to see them on your recent list, which it will load here like this, um, or either you could also upload them to open the notebook that you wanna work on. So you can just like simply drag the file that you're interested in and it will upload it and you'd be able to use it right away if it loads. Okay. Um, as you can see, Collab has an intuitive interface where you could create code cells and markdown cells depending on how you want to structure your code. So you can simply click on this, um, this buttons here for the code and for the markdown cells, you can just click on the text cell here. Once you have your notebook open, the next step you will be to set up the processor and runtime environment. As I have briefly mentioned in the beginning, one of the strongest perk of Google Collab is that it comes with a free GPU. You could select your runtime over here, um, yeah, like this, and uh, you can either choose between GPU and TPU for your accelerator. We'll be using GPU to train our models throughout the semester. If you subscribe to Google Collab Pro, or even decide to use custom GCP runtime by connecting to Google Cloud Platform, you'll have an access to higher RAM environment, which is basically a better version of CPU that helps speeding up your data loader, pre-processing code that you might have, and even your model training as well. I'd recommend going through recitation on GCP, which will be led by Vish, as per personally, it helped me a lot in terms of running different applications on large models within a limited time frame for the homework. Google Colab runs in a Linux environment, and you could interact with Terminal using the exclamation mark. You can execute any bash command and even install a particular library that you may need. This command here would install Torch for us, which already says that it has been satisfied, and the NVIDIA SMI command here would show us which GPU that we are allocated with, um, and the memory use usage of it as well. Most of the time, free version of the Colab would allocate users with Tesla K4 GPU, or Tesla T4, or P100 if you're lucky. You could also use torch.device command here in order to check whether GPU is available or not. If GPU isn't running properly, this command here will print out CPU instead. Because it is a Google hosted service, we could also connect your notebook to your Google Drive using this mount command here. It will then ask you for the permission to your account. And once you grant that access, you'd be able to see that you have successfully connected your Google Drive with the notebook to, to the following directory. Note that this comment here would connect the Google Drive that is under the same account that you have used to create your notebook with. Once the mounting is done, you could go on and use it as any normal storage space use, uh, using the Linux command. Here, I'm making a simple directory for this tutorial and listing the contents of this directory, which obviously would be empty for now since I have just created. Next, once we have the directory, we can write and load files from the directory. Um, let's first create a dummy pandas data frame from a dictionary, which we will save it as CSV to the folder that we have just created under the name test. Um, now, if we list the updated contents like this, you are able to see our test.csv file is sitting there waiting for us. Now we could also read this using the usual pandas read CSV command. I will specify the column that is that I like to use as an index column, column one, and you're able to see that column one is being used as an index column in a loaded data frame. Not only CSV files, we can also save PyTorch models as a serialized object. Here we have a very simple neural network which you'll get to immerse yourself within a few weeks, and the process of saving is pretty much the same. We can specify a path with the same prefix as well as the name to our model file, and then we could use torch.save comment directly with the assigned path. 
Here, uh, you can notice that Torch to Save comment not only takes in the model path information, but also some additional info such as epoch, state dictionary, and losses. You can customize and choose which info you want to save when using the torch.save command, and you'll get to see and explore these once you start on your first homework. And now if we check our directory again, you can check that our model.pt file has been added as well. One important thing to note here, we will like to save our models to the directory within our drive because the content folder, which is like the default temporary storage that comes along with the Google Collab, gets refreshed and loses all its content once the runtime is reset and reconnected. So be careful when you are saving some file to the content folder and try to build a habit of utilizing and saving to your Google Drive. Or if you decide to connect to GCP host, you would have to worry about losing your contents when the runtime gets dis disconnected. More info could be found in GCP recitation, so stay tuned. Moving along, you can also use the torch load command to load your sales model. Saving models would be useful when you are running a long training job that involves many epochs. It is a good practice to create model checkpoints every few epochs as it will allow you to load the best on uh, on whenever you want to make a submission or could also help you with restoring and resuming the training job that you have been running whenever you have to stop the run in the midway. Now these cells below have to do with Kaggle. Uh, one part of the homework assignments of this course involves Kaggle competition where you'll be making submissions to Kaggle and compete to crawl up on the leaderboard. Luckily, connecting to Kaggle to the Google Collab could be done with few simple comments. First step will be to have your Kaggle token ready, which you can find, find from the Kaggle website. In the Kaggle website, if you go to your profile, um, the account tab, and then if you hover over to the API section here, you will see an option to create a new API token. If you click on this, a JSON file consisting a pair of key values will be downloaded, which basically a username and password that you could simply copy and paste here back in the notebook, right here. Um, and these are the steps needed to execute and set up Kaggle for Google Collab, which you can copy and paste anytime you're working on your homework assignment. Now we see that Kaggle has successfully set up, and now we can use the Kaggle comment to get the data or make submission to the competition. For example, I have set up a dummy competition here, and we can download the data directly with the Kaggle comment. So for each competition, you'll find the comment under the data tab that could be used to download the data for the competition, and you can find it over here. Um, once it's downloaded, you can unzip the data as well in your notebook. So if we run this cell here, um, you can go to the file explorer here and you can see that um, our data has been downloaded successfully with your sample submissions.csv and train.csv file in this case. Also, once you have finished training your model and created a submission file for your competition, you can use this um, submit comment here to make direct submission from Collab. This comment could be found if you hover over to the submit predictions on the competition page right here, like this part here. Um, you can edit any message that you want once you are submitting and by executing this, you are directly making your submission to Kaggle. Now you can see under the um, letterboard tab here, you can see that my submission uh, has been successfully made here. And going to the leaderboard would allow you to compare your performance from your peers, which I found it pretty fun and motivating when working on the homework assignments. Moving on, another useful tool that Collab provides is a variable inspector. If you take a look at the left pane, just above the file inspector right here, you'll find yourself a little X in a curly bracket. This is a variable inspector, which basically shows you a summary of what different variables you have and what they contain. So here we can see the type and the shape of our variable as well. And this tool is particularly helpful to, for keeping track when you are training a model that involves lots of data loaders and variable that you want to keep track of. Finally, before we wrap up, I'll like to comment on resetting the runtime. One of the most common errors that students encounter in this course while training the model is GPU running out of memory or whatever other errors that has to do with GPU. If this is the case, the easiest fix would be um, restarting the runtime. It will restart the GPU and then you can rerun the code from there. In order to do so, there are a couple, couple of options. First, you can go to runtime menu over here and select restart runtime. 
This one will delete the files you downloaded or libraries that you have custom installed. However, if you do choose this disconnect and delete runtime option, it will factory reset runtime and delete all the custom installations that you made on this environment. That was it for this recitation. I strongly recommend going through the GCP recitation by Vish as using Google Collab along with GCP will benefit you a lot when working on the homework assignments rather than just relying on the free tier version of the Google Collab. Other than that, if you have any further questions, feel free to let me know or other TAs and we'll do our best to resolve your doubts. Thanks and happy deep learning.